saved her today. Thanks. We feel lucky and we're grateful to Seamus for being there for her. And they have this wonderful relationship of love and respect. I mean, I've seen that over now almost a year. I'll just feel better once I eat. Yeah. So when's the last time you took your medicine? And it seems like the disease is not a part of the picture. Maybe the disease is experience brought them closer together. It's wonderful to watch as a parent. When I was diagnosed, I wondered if this was maybe too much for a new relationship. And I told him, you know, this is not what you signed up for. I also don't want you um, to feel like you have to stay in a relationship with me because of what's happening. He really stood by me. Hey, it's almost midnight and I'm coming to see you. It's pretty good. He slept you know, by my hospital bed in a cot every single day, keeping me company and taking care of me. And that was a really amazing and touching thing for me. You get to know a lot of someone by traveling, they say, but if someone's unwell and you have to be there at their side, that happens and it either falls apart or it doesn't. It's Thursday, June 15th. I think there was a change that happened when, when Suleika became sick in the sense that this is such a powerful thing to happen to someone that you love. Um, it brings such a clarity and I think even one that can can really blow people back because um, in some ways, even though you've got to this point um, through these terrible circumstances, everything's so clear. We're in a relationship of less than a year. It's brought us together, but it puts an incredible strain on both people. And there was a day when, when our hair started falling out that, that was kind of like, whoa, this is, uh, this is gonna get hard. And there we were in the bathroom of her little hospital room and a lot of her hair had fallen out, but what I think happens to other people and happened to her is that you have to pull out the last bit of your hair. And I had to help her pull out these last clumps of hair on her bald head. And that's, you know, that's when it gets uh, very real. I remember feeling so full of fear and kind of, um, that feeling that you have where you're about to cry and um, trying to hold it in and I'd be you know, in the hospital and have to, have to leave her hospital room. That feeling doesn't go away quickly. You gotta stay away and, and come back later and that's also hard. And yet I wanted to be there and she wanted to be there and these are very difficult and kind of tricky situations to deal with. You know, everything from, from not only meeting her parents for the first time but meeting her parents under these circumstances, um, a very personal intimate, the most deeply personal thing for a family. With the news of her diagnosis came Seamus, whom we had never met. She had just started talking about it. It was really that bad news. It was clear that if she was so happy with uh, Seamus, we could we, we welcome him as well. And our house is big enough to have everybody live here. I remember being with Seamus, researching bone marrow transplants, and I saw that one of the permanent side effects was infertility. The big decision for me was about whether I was going to freeze my eggs or to freeze embryos that had been fertilized with my boyfriend's sperm. It felt like a really big step especially so soon in our relationship. Um, but I think we both could imagine ourselves potentially way down the line having children together. So, I, you know, I was given a few minutes to make that decision and in the end I sort of reluctantly 
chose eggs because it seemed like a safer bet. Illness does weasel its way into every aspect of your life and every relationship, no matter how good it is. I think this relationship has helped Sulaika psychologically uh, get through this phase of the disease.